Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Harlan Parrott Sr. coming to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful God and Savior. It is the 25th day of March, the year 2009. We're continuing this wonderful Bible study course, God's Plan for Mankind. And we're starting a new supplement today, supplement number 18. This is for lessons 35 and 36. Supplement 18 for Lessons 35 and 36. In the last four lessons, we have dealt fully with the great doctrines of salvation and the true security of every Bible believer. We have also studied the contracts made by God with men, and we have seen that there are certain conditions that men must meet in order to receive the manifold blessings of God. Some people object to what we are teaching concerning these blessings on the grounds that God has not given them to men all through this age. They wonder why God desires to give men these blessings today more than he has in the past. Others argue that God knows what men have need of and if it is his will to bless them, he will do so without them putting forth the effort to get the blessings. Still others argue that if it's God's will to give them these blessings, he will do so, but since he has not done so, then it must not be the will of God. These arguments are excuses of unbelief and prove nothing as far as God's will is concerned in these matters. God promised to pour out his spirit in the last days. God always keeps his word, and this is one of the greatest reasons of the present revival of faith and power among Christians. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said, in Acts chapter 2, verse 14 through 21, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God and Satan in a final contest. Not only did God inspire Peter to predict the revival in the last days, but he also inspired others to predict that satanic powers would be increasingly active in the last days. Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 through 12. Now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 
Remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 through 16. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 through 17 This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no farther, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men as seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, 
and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Revelation 13, verse 1 through 18. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemous, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Revelation 16, verse 13 through 16. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. As these powers increase, God's power will also increase to counteract these demon powers and prove to men that God is the true God. Daniel 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. Acts 2, verse 14 through 21. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, 
seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. James 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Revelation 11, verse 3 through 7. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. The gifts of the Holy Ghost will be exercised in all fullness, and God will again prove himself to be more powerful than Satan. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. God does know what we have need of, there is no argument about this, but to use this fact as an excuse for unbelief and to permit it to hinder us from getting what God has promised is inexcusable. Knowing what we have need of will not cause him to abundantly bless each person with all of what he needs. There must be faith and conformity to the conditions God has laid down before one can receive these benefits. The requirements of God is clear. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If one wants something bad enough, he will put forth the necessary effort to get it. And the man who refuses to obey God and to do what God requires is not worthy of the answer of prayer. If one wants to be saved from sin and bad habits, he will repent of his sins and refuse to live in sin. 
he will turn to God to serve him with his whole heart, then and then alone will God deliver him. If one wants to be healed, he will believe the fact that healing is in the atonement and he will accept Christ as his healer and have faith that he is healed when he prays. If one wants prosperity or some help in material things or in some business problem, he will take his need to God in prayer and commit all of it to God and believe that God will bring him out of his trouble. Whatever one wants from God, that is promised in the Bible. If one wants it badly enough, he will get down to business and conform to the laws of God that will enable him to attain to his desire. Don't play with religion. There's too much playing around with religion by the average person. Men will use good sense in every realm to make a success of life except in religion. When it comes to using plain common sense in religion and in religious matters, most men will throw away their chances of making a success. If they made a living in the same manner that they carry on their religious life, the majority would starve to death. Some men will faithfully carry out the most intricate details of any phase of life that will enable them to be a success. But many times the same men will not take time to learn how to make a success of the religious life and they will not obey God in the most simple laws of answered prayer. And yet they wonder why their prayers are not answered. They seem to think that any hit and miss program is all right in religion. They are quick to become reconciled if prayer is not answered. In fact, they are resigned to failure before they pray. If deliverance from sin or sickness is desired, they are satisfied with the outcome regardless of whether they get what they want or not. They take the same attitude in business problems. They ignore divine laws and seek every means of success other than God. Failure or a setback in answers to prayer is generally expected in the first place, and it is taken for granted that it cannot be the will of God for them to get what they desire, and immediately they are reconciled to the idea as a settled, unalterable fact. The least hindrance to answered prayer brings surrender on the part of ever getting an answer. This is simply playing with religion. The devil himself stands by and laughs at the helplessness of man and is highly pleased at the progress he makes in keeping men from putting forth sufficient effort to get what they want from God. He sidetracks them so easily that he knows just what to do and how long it will take to turn them aside from their purpose. He even gets men to blame God for the failure or he gets them to abandon their purpose if the answer is not forthcoming the moment they pray. Men are fools enough to listen to him, the Satan that is, and they cooperate more with Satan and his powers and are satisfied to live more in defeat than in being bold and determined to get what was rightly theirs in Christ. God is not responsible for suffering and failure. As we have seen before, Satan and demons and sin cause the troubles in a fallen world. We would have had no failure, sickness, and no suffering if man had not sinned and given his dominion over to the devil. This is enough proof that God is not the one responsible for such conditions in the human race. Yet the average Christian will blame God for his troubles. Preachers write books and preach sermons on how God wills and causes sufferings. People write books such as Why Do Christians Suffer? In this particular book, Why Do Christians Suffer? 
the author spends all of his time trying to show that God is the author of sufferings and that he sends them upon men. This is only part of the truth. God has made laws, and when men break those laws, they have to pay the penalties. God is responsible for making the laws and penalties, but he is not responsible for men breaking the laws, and he is not the one who executes the laws. Satan, fallen angels, and demons execute the penalties for sin in the human race, as we have seen in Lesson 14. Main point number six. The truth is that if God's will were obeyed by all, there would be no reaping for wrong sowing. There would be no sin, sickness, or death, and no suffering of any kind. This will be the condition on earth when God rules here again. Revelation 21, verse 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So you can see in the new earth there won't be any sickness and disease and pain, so it must be the will of God for it not to be now. The preacher referred to above, gives many scriptures to prove that God sends suffering, but he does not make it clear in what sense God sends it. It is because men sin and disobey that certain sufferings are permitted to come upon men. They have to reap what they sow, and therefore God is not directly the cause of this suffering. Men and demons are the cause. All sufferings that do not come as a result of personal sin are either the works of the devil or the works of wicked men and demons who make war on Christians and cause them to go through certain kinds of sufferings. Neither of these causes are from God. Just because they are tolerated by God because of the present curse is no proof that God wills or sends such sufferings. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Luke 13 verse 14 through 16 and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Satan, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done. That's verse 17 included. So you can see that Satan is the one that bound this dear lady. It wasn't God. 
our dear Lord came to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. If it was not God's will to heal everyone that Satan oppressed, then he would not have healed anybody. John 10 verse 10 tells the truth of the matter. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So you can see God wants the best things for his children, not sins and curses. When Jesus Christ prayed to the Father in heaven and taught us how to pray, he said to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we saw just a moment ago in Revelation 21, verse 1 through 7, that there will be no sickness and sin and pain and crying and all those things in heaven. So if it's the will of God in heaven for not to have these things, then surely it is the will of God on this earth for there not to be such things. So the devil himself is trying to cause God's people to be deceived into thinking that it's God's will for them to suffer when it's not. Just because Paul said that he was appointed to suffer for the gospel is no proof that God sins or wills the sufferings. God knew that Paul would have to be persecuted for the gospel because it was new to men and contrary to their beliefs. Therefore, it was natural for this new religion to go through certain conflicts and those who preached it would naturally suffer certain persecutions. Today, in certain lands, Paul would not have gone through such sufferings because Christianity is the prevailing and accepted religion. So no Christian today should use Paul's experience to excuse his unbelief and give in to the attacks of the devil. Even Paul's sufferings in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 was not caused by physical disease or sin which Christ bore on the cross to take away from him. So there can be no comparison between Paul and modern men who are suffering needlessly and suffering pains and sicknesses just because they refuse to accept the benefits for which Jesus Christ died. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed there unto. Apostle Paul also said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 14 these sayings, Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. The Greek word here is philspis. Not a disease as usually understood, but tribulation. It's translated tribulation 20 times, affliction in the sense of tribulation 18 times, burdened, anguish, persecution, and trouble. Not once is it used to a physical sickness or disease. When Peter said in 1 Peter 2 verse 21 that men were called to suffer he could not mean that men were called to bear the sins and sicknesses which Christ bore on the cross. 1 Peter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. In the same chapter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, Talking of Christ, Peter said, Who his own self bare our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. The sufferings that Peter refers to is the sufferings which Christ went through for righteousness sake and which every Christian is supposed to bear. And this is spoken of as railings and persecutions for doing well. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently? 
but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Christians are not called to live in sin and suffer sicknesses and failure in life, for freedom from these ills is what Christ died to deliver us from, as we have seen before in other lessons. Tribulations, persecutions, trials, and other hardships may be experienced by Christians at certain periods in some lands, but due to wars on Christians and all saints are called to suffer during these times. This is what caused the sufferings in the early church. Local persecutions for well-doing may be experienced by Christians in any land. And temptations and wars with demons will be experienced in all places where there are saved men, and these are the things they are called to go through. But to use these kinds of sufferings as an excuse to tolerate sin, sickness, bad habits, financial failures, and poverty in America and other lands where Christianity is the prevailing religion is one of the biggest blunders of Christendom today. It would only be if atheism gains the upper hand that men would begin to persecute Christians again, that real Christians would have to go through the tribulation mentioned in the following verses. John 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Acts 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Philippians 1 verse 29 For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 4 For verily when we were with you we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass and you know. Scriptures such as Isaiah 54 verse 7 and 8 Numbers 14, verse 33 through 35, Jeremiah 29, verse 10, and Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 68, and other passages revealing sufferings in Israel cannot be applied to Christians who obey God. Numbers 14, verse 33 through 35, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 68, tells us that Israel was promised by God if they would obey God and do all his judgments and all of his statutes and commandments and laws, he would bless them from heaven above and earth beneath. He would make them the head, not the tail. They would chase their enemies. One would put a hundred to flight and two would put 10,000 to flight. Such language as this, proving that if they obeyed God, they would be blessed above all the people of the earth. But if they disobeyed God, they would be cursed and all the curses that he spoke of would come upon them. We read this entire chapter in the last lesson, which listened to. 
Isaiah 54, verse 7 and 8. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Jeremiah 29, verse 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. These sufferings would not have been true of Israel if she had obeyed God. God permitted Israel to go through these sufferings because of sin. He predicted they would suffer if they disobeyed him, for then he could not protect them from the devil. Therefore, for Christians to use such passages to prove that it is God's will for them to be defeated in life, to suffer sickness, sin, poverty, and other calamities shows either ignorance or rebellion against God's word. There is really no excuse for such slander of God or for such ignorance of truth if men will only be sensible and study the facts. It was not God's will for Israel to suffer these defeats, and he showed them the way out if they would have listened. So it is today. It is not God's will for Christians to suffer such defeats if they will but only take his plan and cooperate with him. May God save us and help us from such modern fallacy that God gets glory out of seeing his children in trouble. He does not like to see them suffering defeat, living in sin, dying with all kinds of diseases, full of despair and unbelief, and given over to the ravages of fallen angels and demons. The above scriptures specifically state the reason God permitted men to suffer defeats and plagues of all kinds, and they cannot be used to prove that it is God's direct will that men should suffer the things for which Jesus Christ died to deliver them from. God always tells men that it is because of sin they are punished, and this will always be the case. We also saw this in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1 through 26, which was in the last lecture, which listened to. Ezra 9, verse 13. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds, and for our great trespass, seeing that thou our God has punished us less than our iniquities deserve, and has given us such deliverance as this. Psalm 103, verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Hebrews 10, verse 26 through 29. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20-22 for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. 
If we will obey the Lord and follow the teaching that we are hearing, there will be no failure to get from God what God has promised us. We can get anything that we want in life. This we have seen in lessons number 10 and other lessons on prayer and faith. So do not let modern theories of unbelief rob you of these powerful and wonderful blessings in Jesus Christ. In the future supplements, we will go more fully into proof along these lines. Until then, we will continue to pray for you and with you for the fullness of the gospel of Christ in your experience and in the lives of our fellow students. 10 Important Bible Questions Answered Do you know, number one, that it is possible that every Christian on earth now can experience the power of God to do the works that Jesus Christ did? We have abundantly proved this in lesson number 20, 22, 26, 28, and 30. One cannot believe the many plain scriptures that prove this and still believe the above-mentioned unbelieving theories of men. The two doctrines cannot be reconciled. So to be honest, we have to stand with the Bible that all things that Christ did by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, believers can also do. This is stated in the following verses. Matthew 28, verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So he hadn't changed. He's still with us in the person of the Holy Ghost. Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. John 14, verse 12 through 15. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. John 16, verse 23 through 26. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. First Corinthians 12, verse 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, 
and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Question number two. Did you know that the great American desert will soon be like the Garden of Eden? Many scriptures teach that the desert shall blossom like a rose, and waters shall spring forth in the desert during the millennial reign, or the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ and his saints on this planet. Isaiah 35, verse 1 through 8. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. After that, the whole earth will be made new, like a beautiful garden. Isaiah 65, verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Isaiah 66, verse 22 through 24. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Second Peter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Revelation 21, verse 1 through 27. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, and on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof and a hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysophysis, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 22, verse 1 through 21. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. 
And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Question number three. Did you know that more men will be called to the ministry during the last seven years of this age than in any seven years in human history? During the future tribulation, in the last seven years of this age, there will be the greatest revival that has ever been witnessed. When the church is raptured, people will then know that they are in the last years of this age and multitudes will turn to God and will start preaching the gospel. This is predicted in the following scriptures. Acts chapter 2 verse 14 through 21. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. Be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 7, verse 1 through 17. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. 
saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God saying Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be under our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelation 12 verse 11 And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 15, verse 2 through 4. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And they sung the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, now they had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. There will be 144,000 Jews who get saved and become servants to God. We read this in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 through 8. Also we see them again in Revelation 14, verse 1 through 5. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. 
These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. It is doubtful that there are this many Jews that have become preachers so far in all this age. Then a multitude of Gentiles of all nations will be destroyed because of their preaching. We just read that in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 17. They were on the altar, if you will remember, and white robes were given unto them, and they asked the Lord how long it would be before that he would avenge their blood on the people that dwelled on the earth. And he told them to rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Also we saw the ones that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his mark and his name. They were standing on the sea of glass having the harps of God in Revelation 15 verse 2 through 4. In Revelation 20 verse 4 through 6 we just read that the people that were killed, which had not worshipped the beast in his image, etc., were sitting on thrones, judging the world, or helping Christ to reign a thousand years and then forever. Not one of these Jews or Gentiles just mentioned will be saved at the time of the rapture, for they would have been caught up to meet Jesus in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They will not only be witnesses of God after the rapture, but after it they will become saved. Question number four. Did you know that all future saints will not be changed from mortality to immortality by being resurrected? All future saints will never be resurrected due to the fact that it is God's plan to permit earthly saints in the millennium and in the new earth to continue eternally as natural people, as Adam and Eve and the whole race would have lived if man had not fallen. After the resurrection from the dead is past, people will continue to be born forever, as we have proved in supplement number two, question number two. These people will never have part in the resurrection because they will never die. They will eat of the tree of life and live forever as Adam could have done in the beginning. Revelation 22, verse 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there and they need no candle now the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Question number five. Did you know that no man can be saved and not know it? Paul said that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ has crucified the flesh with affections and lust. Galatians 5 verse 24. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Can this be true of any person and he would not know it? Such could not possibly happen so that a person would be ignorant of such a transformation. If this be true, then those who do not know that they have become new creatures are not in Christ regardless of their profession. Question number six. Did you know that the devil never enters bodily into anyone? He is an angel with a spirit body as proved in lesson number six, main point number ten, 
so it would be impossible for him to get his body inside of a human body. If Satan would leave his body, he would be dead. James 2 verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And such the Bible does not teach of angels, of course they cannot die. The only sense Satan enters into anyone is by being in union with them, as explained in lesson number four, points number one, the main point, and point number four. Question number seven. Did you know that it is not God's direct will for any man to be a sinner or die of a disease? If God had his perfect will done on earth as it is in heaven, there would have been no sickness or sin at all. When God's will is finally done on earth as it is in heaven, there will again be no such thing as death or sin. Revelation 21, verse 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Since this is true, it cannot be the highest will of God for men to suffer sicknesses and die in sin today. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. With his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Third John 1, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Question number 8. Did you know that Noah did not preach 120 years building the ark? And it did not take him 120 years during that time to build the ark? The fact is that he did not take this long to build the ark as proved in supplement number 1, question number 4. So certainly he could not have preached only during this time. It is not stated how long he preached. No doubt he preached during several hundred years, for he was righteous in his generation of 600 years before the flood and 350 years after the flood, with the exception of getting drunk one time. Question number nine. Did you know that the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are three separate and distinct persons? That the beast is the devil incarnate and that there are only two persons referred to by these terms is unscriptural. This is clear from the fact that the dragon, a symbol of Satan, is always seen as a separate person from the beast and the false prophet. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 through chapter 13 verse 18. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 through 17. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, 
And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we can see there that the dragon and his angels was actually Satan himself. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 18. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat in great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saint. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Revelation 16, verse 13 through 16. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Revelation 19, verse 19 through 21. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, 
and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. If all three are separate persons seen in these passages, then Satan is never incarnate in the beast, and there must be three distinct persons. Question number 10. Did you know that angels will be judged by human beings? This is plainly stated by Paul in the following verses. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more of things that pertain to this life? This refers no doubt to the time of the judgment of angels. Second Peter 2 verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Jude 1 verse 6 and 7. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Since this refers to the time of the judgment of angels, the saints will also have positions to do this. The glorified saints in the eternal kingdom will be heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ of the vast creations. Romans 8, verse 17 and 18. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This does not mean that saints will take the positions held from ages past by faithful angels, but that men will rule over the fallen angels. They may be even in higher positions than the good angels. That remains to be seen. Thus we just completed... Supplement number 18 for lessons 35 and 36. So until next time, when we pick up a new lesson, which will be, Where are the dead? We'll love you in the name of Jesus Christ. Until then, God bless you.